Hey everyone, it's Speaker Insight here. We help speakers, authors and coaches to build a business on your terms. <laughs> so as always, we always start our Facebook Lives with what's the buzz in your business and we're going to talk about the buzz in our business. We do this because as speakers, authors and coaches, we want you to be out there networking and be interesting, right? Tell people what's going on in your business. Don't just be like, oh yeah, same day, different stuff. <laughs> um, we've got lots to celebrate as always. We really Think do. We're at what, some, over 460 members now. It's ridiculous. We're yeah. growing about 100 it's, members a week. Yeah, okay. which is just incredible. And, and you know, the connections that are being made within the group are just fantastic. So for those of you uh, who are simply watching this on the Speaker Insight page, yeah. if you want to come and join us inside the Connection Hub, I'm going to put the link in now. I'm going to do I'll, this on I'll my get laptop. Kelly to do that bit. <laughs> whilst I tell you a little bit more about the buzz in our business, because really, I'm kind of buzzing from a retreat that I ran at the, the weekend. Um, more for the, so, so in, in this group, obviously, we talk about uh, the speakers, authors, the coaches, or hello to everyone that's coming along. We, I might just say hello as we go, depending on which one of us is speaking. Um, but um, so at the weekend, uh, so speakers, authors and coaches are really uh, where we center all of the information that we talk about in these Facebook lives. But wearing my other hat, which is more sort of for the helpers, the healers, the holistic therapists who also need help running businesses. You know, we're all about running a business on your terms. They also need some support. And so uh, I collaborate with another partner called Liz Walker. And at the weekend, we ran our release your baggage unlock your brilliance uh, workshop or rather retreat and it was absolutely fantastic to be able to help people learn a whole new healing modality as well as help them on their way with their businesses so I'm kind of fresh off the back of that and really kind of buzzing around how that goes there is a little lesson that I might pick up a little bit later in this Facebook live around timing and around how we stand out and how our messages and the language that we use around them might serve us and sometimes might not. So you can learn from my personal experience of the weekend. And one of the other things that we've done recently, because we are really here to help you strategize around the business. You're all speakers, authors, or coaches, and maybe a combination of the three. And what we want you to do is actually build a business that works around that message, that product, that service, so that we're connecting the dots for you and actually making it work on your terms. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. And so when we did this, we said, okay, what do you guys want? We put a survey up in the group. Um, and if any new members are in there, yeah. it's basically asking, what do you want us to do Facebook Lives on? Who do you want us to get guest experts in to talk about certain subjects? And actually, well, I think it was the third option was, yeah. how do I stand out in a really crowded market space as a speaker, author, or coach? How do I stand out? So that's actually what we're doing our Facebook Live on today. Yeah. Um, so we will be taking, we've, we've scheduled uh, until the end of end May. Of May all of our Facebook Lives, doing on the content in the yeah. survey. And if you've got more suggestions, don't, don't hold back from putting it in the survey. We'll carry on. But we really want to serve you guys. We want to put the information and the questions and the content that you want rather than what we think you want. Yeah. Um, and that's why we're doing this one. So let's talk about this, how do you stand out? Um, because we're, there really isn't any new information out there. Okay? <laughs> Unless you're an inventor, um, you're a researcher, maybe in the tech space, then you're going to be coming up with new things. But I would probably say 80-90% of people that I come across are coaches, authors and speakers that are talking on quite generic topics, right? Things like leadership exactly. or, you know, to mindset, those Time management. Of yeah. Very, where really all the information is, the way it's different is your experiences of it and the way you've packaged that information and the way that you deliver it. So it's either in the style or the way people experience that product or that, 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 that keynote. That's what makes it different to them. Yeah. So what we want to do today is we want to take you through maybe five or six points that help you stand out. And I want you to make a note of these to say, okay, I've got this one nailed or I need to work on this. So uh, get some pen and paper ready so that Definitely. we can actually give you some advice. And please ask comments, um, ask questions and put comments in, in, the, in the comment section below if you've got some. I don't, that, that's that's why I'm looking down duty. every now and yes, I'm on duty. Hey but. Brett, hey Emma. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the first question that I want to ask you. What makes you memorable? Hmm. Okay, what makes you stick in someone's mind when they've either seen you on stage, read your book, 
or been introduced to you as a coach in a networking session or even had an experience of coaching with you. Mm. That's the first question I want you to think. What's the first thing that comes into my, your mind? What makes you memorable? If, if you were, say, say you were speaking, because I know a lot of you want to aspire to be a speaker if, even if you're not already. If I went to an event and there were 10 keynote speakers on stage talking on your topic, let's say it was a leadership conference and you were a leadership speaker, what makes me go home and remember you? What makes me think, oh, I remember that guy because of blah, 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 okay? And that's the bit that we want to cover because it's what makes them stick in the mind. Yeah. It's not so much about what you said, how you said it, the content, the messaging. It's what's the bit that really made them remember you two months down the line when they go, oh, I know somebody that can help you. I saw him speak at this event and he was blah, blah, blah about this leadership su exactly. subject. So we're going to go through some of the points about what makes you memorable. Um, and then I want you to actually rate yourself or at least put some notes that you need to do some work in this area. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. So let's start with the bit which is actually about what's your story. Yeah, so what's your story? I was just uh, double checking. A couple of people were trying to look in the group and it, the Facebook Live always happens on the Speaker Insight page <laughs> so that more people can actually see it that, 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 that want it. Um, so the what's your story piece is actually really important because generic topics come alive because of your own experience, your expertise, your um, the things that have happened to you that allow you to engage with the topic in some way. So how do you connect with your message in itself? So how do you stand um, within leadership. Let's say it is leadership just because we've been talking about that. So what is your stance on that? What is your experience of that? How, what are the stories that you actually have actively participated in, good and bad, i.e. you know, when you've uh, demonstrated brilliant leadership, when you've seen or experienced brilliant leadership de developed for you, people that you have maybe followed or, or been led by that you've had a brilliant experience with, as well as the flip side of that, which is the, wow, these are some leadership experiences that I would never want. Because using the stories from your life, your... Um, uh, your different credible examples will actually help people relate yeah. much more, not just to the subject, because people love and learn through stories, but also through to how you are providing insights from your experience about the topic. And that is the piece that people resonate with. They're going to align and actually respond to how you have experienced a certain thing, how you teach and talk about a certain thing, because of the experience that they have of leadership. So they're gonna kind of almost resonate with, that makes sense to me because. Yeah. And so your story starts to become part of their story. And that then allows you to um, connect to them so much more. And that allows them to connect to you through your purpose and your passion being shared in the stories that you actually have. So if you think about it, a lot of the time, most of us are the ideal client that we would love to work with now. We were, we once were that, that person, yeah. sort of somewhere along the line. So if you can use the stories from your past, that helps them relate to and recognize that you might actually have the experience that they're now looking for. Yeah. And I think one of the things you touched on then when you were saying about the purpose bit, how many, how many times do you let your audience know why you're talking oh, about that yes. topic, right? What's the big vision? You might be talking about this bit today, mm. but what's the big purpose? What's your big vision? Because people like to be part of something. They yeah. like to be on that bus and say, yeah, I'm part of this big movement, this mission. So you need to articulate that in some way on your marketing, in the beginning of the keynote, not just about why you're talking about this specific part yeah. of leadership, but if we did this in the world of leadership, this is the impact it's going to have on culture, on change, on society, on, on yeah. you know, whatever it might be. You and let that, them know that. Yeah, and, and that for me is really about capturing hearts. You know, we talk about how do you get people's attention at the very beginning of a talk? How do you stand out? And how do you, you know, in that first three seconds before they switch off and start looking at their phones again or whatever it is. Yeah. That's, that's the, the piece. The purpose piece is the piece that makes people go, oh, 
I can get behind that. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely believe in that too, and I want to hear more. Yeah. So sharing your own personal why, for those of you who haven't seen the Simon Sinek TEDx talk, go look at that. that. Um, or but, read Start the Why yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, either way. Definitely. Um, but really, looking at why do I do what I do and starting to throw some of those stories in is one of the best ways that you can start to then hang your messages on that coat hook yeah. around that's that's what you're doing. Yeah. I talk about coat hooks a lot. <laughs> so let's, let's give yourself a bit of a score or a, a note yourself. How much are you uh, marketing, promoting, telling your story yeah. in your audience? to your audience in whatever medium that might be, whether it's on stage, in your marketing, on social media, how much of you have you put out there? Because mm. that's where people are gonna connect with you. Agreed. The next part is about credibility, right? So where do you evidence and demonstrate your credibility? How have you earned mm. the right to talk about this topic, Yeah. right? And for me, that comes in two different guises. It's one about um, what qualifications have you got? Mm. So have you got industry awards? Have you done uh, standards? Your qualifications, what gives you the right from a, a theoretical permission basis? And, and are you telling people that? Because a lot of people go, oh, I don't bother telling them about those qualifications, etc. Yeah. And actually, you don't blow your trumpet up front, but you've got to have this all in your speaker bio, in your about page of your website, all these things that so people can actually see the authority that you have. Yeah. The second bit about credibility is results, <laughs> right? It definitely. We, uh, we, we done our speaker uh, insight retreat um, about a month ago, yeah. and um, I remember there was a lady in the room called Christine, right? Yeah. And literally she had Blown everybody away. going, can I work with you? Yeah. Because one of her results was something like, she worked with a client that was 20,000 pounds in debt, mm -hmm. and she got them to a million, a million in profit, yeah. right? So when you hear that type of story, you're like, okay, what does she do? Yeah. And can I have some of that, That's please? Right. That's what everyone in the room was saying. Because the story is the demonstration of this is what I've created. So not only is it a, you know, here's, I take you from A to B, it was actually told within a story that you go, that's what I want, and it's that. And so that's one of the things about, you earn the right by having the, the credentials, the, the qualifications, the bits of paper, the theory to say, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And for me, that's not enough. Yeah. Agreed. Right, because I know lots of people out there that are textbook geniuses. Yeah. And you put them in front of a person, they don't get the results because they can't translate that theoretical information into an imp imp implementation. Mm. So I want to hear what results have you got. Yeah. And sometimes in your in the industry, you might talk about there isn't qualifications that are relevant. It's all life experience. So then you need to really okay. ramp up what are the results that you've got. And my, my my suggestion for you is to have three top case studies. Right, so you can actually take testimonials from that, but also demonstrate the user journey of how they met you, what you did at each stage, and what they've got as the end result. And maybe those three user journeys and case studies are different pain points of your ideal customer. And I am just going to address those of you who are like just starting out and going, That's all well and good if they've got results, I know I can do it, but you know, I haven't got those results. Okay, good. So my question then becomes, what else is possible? Who could you actually ask? Who could you do some test um, uh, case studies with, you know, some pilots with? What could you run or do that allows you to present the experience that you now know that you can deliver for people? So if that's a new concept, how could I try it out and actually allow people to experience it so I can get the case studies or I can get the stories around it? So I won't hear excuses. For those of you who've been coached by me, you know that this is true. I won't listen to that. I'm like, okay, well, how could you get the experience that you're wanting? Because that is then going to provide you with enough passion and confidence that the thing that you've just actually put together really, truly works. Too many people procrastinate and dither. I'm about to go on soapbox. Um, too many people procrastinate and dither around all, oh, but I know it's going to work. I know it's going to work. I'm like, okay, good. Find someone to, and make it work and then tell the story and go get more work because you are change makers. You are the people. Well, I am on soapbox. Um, you are the people who are going out and changing lives. So go do that. Yeah. And don't feel that you have to have the whole user journey case studied and documented throughout. If I was taking the example of Christine that we just said, yeah. you might have just got the stage of getting her out of 20 grand debt. You might not have got her the million pound turnover yet, but document that, and that's a bit of evidence. That's a bit of the first result, which you can start saying, I've got this first result for people. So you work on your marketing about how to get people out of debt, Agreed. rather than how to get them the million pound. And then you just keep on working with those clients, as Helena said. Yeah. 
And you evolve too. So you start to notice how you actually evolve and stand out even more and start claiming your space. So, so um, you know, I'm going to take that into a little bit of uh, just talking about are you actually being a stand for the message that you want to deliver? So where are you taking the opportunities? How often are you actually speaking about those core messages that you know and stand by? I call it the green flag in the sand. Haven't got time to actually go into that. Maybe we'll do a Facebook Live on green. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Wow, I'm on one. It's because I've been be, teaching all be June, weekend. Though. We're booked up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be in June. Wait for the green flag in the sand in June. So, so um, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about IP before yeah. I go into this I think piece? this is really important, right? This is one of the things that I absolutely love to do. It's my little sweet spot is creating frameworks for people or helping people create their own frameworks. I think everyone at the retreat came away with an awesome <laughs> framework. And actually, I learned this um, from Brendan Bouchard when I was in his uh, Centre Ring uh, mastermind group. And it was one of the things that I think is really key mm. for anybody who's an expert and to stand out is actually I want you to have your own intellectual property. So if you hear me speak about IP, I mean intellectual property. Mm -hmm. It's something that you own, right? You put your, you hang it on your coat hook. That's it. But it's basically your process that becomes your, it, for some people it's part of an asset. It's on a balance sheet for your company where you go and sell it, right? Mm -hmm. There are people that have built frameworks that are so well known that training programs have been built on the back of them that licensing products have been built on the back of them, and they actually become the valuable thing in your company. Yeah. So not only is it worth creating your own IP from a value assets point of view, it's also what helps you uh, get known for. You're mm -hmm. known for this process. Yeah. So um, think about, if you work with a client, do you have a sort of a user journey that you take them on? Do you have certain topics and things that you do each stage? Do you have a process that you take them on from where they are here to where you want them, where they want to be, yeah. is that seven steps? Is it a, a circular process? Is it, is it involved? A star? Yeah. Is it a whatever? Whatever it is, it's got to be. What problems do you solve along this journey to get them from A to Z? Yeah. And that's what we want you to have. And most people have it; they just don't articulate it. Mm. And the second bit that they don't do is they don't create a nice infographic or illustrative diagram. So people can actually go, oh, I recognise that I'm at stage one and I'd love to be at stage seven and I didn't realise I had to do all these things in between. Oh, that's how I'm going to work with so-and-so to do that. Yeah. You'll know, when I start talking about frameworks, if I mention to you um, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, mm. one of the most infamous frameworks out there. And people, I don't think it's a good example, because when I say to people, yeah. what are they? They go, uh, oh, I think I know one or two. Yeah. And when you've got that diagram, it's a bit messy. So something about an axe? Yeah. <laughs> Saw. Yeah. But people get it. And if I said to you, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, again, people who are psychology-based would know that. So um, you've got um, the hedgehog principle, the yeah. sweet spot, all these types of things. You'll, you'll, you'll understand what I mean when I start giving you examples. Yeah. What I want you to do is actually go, okay, what does my framework look like? My overarching, you might have teaching methodologies. Yeah. So you might have things that you use to teach a certain subject, but there should be one big mother yeah. of an overarching framework that covers everything that you do in your business. Yeah. Okay, the big NLP chunked up themes that you, you teach about. Yeah. And that's the bit I would love for it to be on the home page of your website. Mm -hmm. I'd love for it to be the first page in your keynotes or early on in your keynotes to say, this is what I teach about. This is my big mission. This is why I'm a speaker. Yeah. Today, we're going to just talk about step one. Yeah. Because if you're getting gigs in corporates and you just do a keynote on step one, then they're going to go, oh, we need to get that guy back to go and do a workshop and more and delivery and coaching yeah. on these to actually work with our SLT members or whoever it might be. It's a door opening. If you're a one-stop keynote speaker, yeah. that, well, the chance of you getting rebooked at that same venue or that corporation is, is pretty slim, right? And, and it really is about you then demonstrating everything, you know, let's say we are talking about leadership leadership the, the 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 way in which you approach it might be the whole of your coat rack you know that becomes the overarching bit but the way in which you talk about the different things about you know leading your team leading the vision etc might be the different hooks that you actually put things on yeah. so that's what we're talking about when we say there's there's the overarching uh, framework in itself and then you've got some teaching frameworks that sit underneath it that help to illustrate and demonstrate what you mean within the overarching concept. 
And with the framework, what I think what makes it really unique is going back to Helena's point about what's your story. Mm. Because again, there might be a, your personal experience of potentially being your ideal client or being your avatar. Yeah. You go, when I was out there, this was the journey that I had as, a, as an option to go on. Yeah. When I experienced it, I realized that step three was missing and that was the bit that I had to personally experience, put some content around, put some training around to put that in step three and that then facilitated the rest of the journey and made it a lot quicker. Yeah. So you've already got a mapped out journey but actually there's the personal experience of how you tweak it, how you add to it, how you subtract from it mm -hmm. that make it unique and yours and then the visual diagram of it, the illustrative di diagram yeah. is all around your theme. Yeah. It's all around your brand, it's all around your messaging. So, you know, we've done so many where they've actually been, um, you know, maps of the world when I worked with Priya and she had a whole thing mapped out and every country was giving yourself permission to live in. So it depends what you're, you know, we've got Brett on whose whole thing yeah. is all about Titanic, Titanic and stuff. And so, all of that. you know, it's all going to be around the, the, the Titanic factor and the butterfly effect. And so his framework is going to have those illustrative things in there. So it brings your brand to life. I don't want you to start doing... Yeah seven steps to happiness and that's just my thing about internet marketing repurposing content and just making it not yeah not it's just, you just it's just really <laughs> scammy and I, i'm not talking about those types of free books with seven steps in yeah. i'm talking about a real process journey that you take somebody on to where they're at what the pain points are that they're at when you first find them yeah. and what their ultimate aspiration is at the end of it and how do you work with them yeah through different modalities, through different teachings to get them there. Right? And, and it really is the what you do and how you do it factor that becomes part of that framework. So that actually encompasses how you work with people, which is as much part of the story as what you do with people, yeah. um, you know, i.e. what you teach people. Because there's a teaching, but there's also a methodology. So, you know, the, the people who came on the retreat this weekend, they love to learn in a group setting. You know, sort of people have preferences and actually you can teach parts of your framework. You become a person who is known as a workshop leader yeah. uh, more than a keynote speaker. Um, or you become, you know, an author that shares on a on a regular basis, um, you know, in live webinars because yeah, that's your style. How many authors do you right? actually get to talk to? Right, they're hiding behind the book. So how many authors do you get? Can I grab on a webinar with J.K. Rowling? Not that's really. It. Not really. <laughs> not really. So you know, how do you actually do it? Becomes part of that as well, and that's designed into the framework in itself. So, so I'm going to move us forward a little bit. So, so there's some thinking about that. So for those of you who have frameworks, feel free to share those visual images oh with God, us. Oh, yeah. Put them in the love. comments. Yeah. Put them in the group. I'd love to see great examples of frameworks. And it will inspire others to actually think about, oh, that, I could do that with me. Right? That's so it. I'll, mm -hmm. put some, I'll put some examples in there as well. That would so be really good. That would be really good. Just because actually getting you thinking at this level can really shift how you interact with your own... Uh, message and with the teaching that you actually do it, it can take it to a, an entirely different level um, and you know we're always going to come at it from a slightly different perspective as well which is who is receiving those messages so I'm going to always go to and who is it that you serve so what when I said earlier on about you know you are the person making a stand for a particular message who is that group of people and what is the level at which they can receive you so, you know, give it, <laughs> my favourite analogy coming up, you wouldn't necessarily give someone a whole cake and expect them to eat it in one go. You would do it slice by slice. Well, depending. <laughs> um, Kelly's birthday's really soon. Um, so, so, so it's really that whole, how do I get you to a level? How do I meet you at the level at which you might receive the message that I'm giving and then expand the frameworks into that user journey that you've actually got? And part of that is about you considering how am I making the, the, the audience feel? So am I giving them overwhelm? If I gave all of the oh framework, God, yeah. that would actually go like, oh my God, that's just too much. Um, whereas actually if you break it down into the bite-sized pieces or the slices of cake as in this analogy, um, that actually can make people feel comfortable with, oh, you explaining it in that way makes me realize what might be going on for me. Now I'm open to like taking the journey a little bit further. So there's this 
there, there's not only the, the chunk size of you presenting the information to the level that the audience are actually at in terms of what they can receive or not. Will it overwhelm them or will it actually inspire and enthuse them? That's the level at which to come. There's then also the, and are you doing it through death by PowerPoint? Or are you bringing your stories in? Are you actually illustrating yeah. something? Or indeed, are you simply presenting? I, I did this at Orthograph not so long ago. I literally presented one of our frameworks and we started to talk through it and that got the conversation going. So, as Maya Angelou, who is dear to my heart and much missed, uh, always said, people may not remember what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. Yeah. And you putting you into the teaching that you do, the speaking that you do, the sharing that you do, is the thing that's gonna make them feel and resonate with you. Yeah, I think I've seen so many keynotes and so many people present. When you keep your audience in their head with content and information, they appreciate it, they learn from it. I find the ones that then, when you've, they've left the auditorium and you talk about, mm. are the keynoters that made you feel. Yeah. Right? They've dropped from the head into the heart. That could be because your story resonated with them. It could be because I talk about having a fire in your belly mm. and you've really got something that you're passionate about or something that you're ranting about that you, you're not going to stand for this anymore and you've yeah. got your ideal clients back. So you're actually going to stand for something and, and change something. We, yeah. we work with thought leaders and change agents, so normally they're doing that because yeah. they want to change something. Yeah. So that part where people are actually go, God, I really resonated with that person. They made me feel, and that's what I remember about them. Like, yeah, they were talking about this and that, but it was, I remember a diagram about their framework. That's it. It's the fact that they made me feel like they cared, that they wanted to help me, that they got me. Yeah. And that they feel like there's a sense of belonging, right? That they actually get drawn to you as a speaker, author, or coach because yeah. they feel like they they want to be part of your on your bus or be part yeah. of your gang. That's it. So it's just thinking about these things about how do you let's go through it. So you've got yeah. the whole what's your story? Yeah. What's your credibility? Yeah. What's your IP? Yes. How do you how do you know who you serve and do yeah. they feel you? Do yeah. you make them feel feel rather than just think about your content do they feel like they want to learn from you because you get them and yeah. you've got their back yeah i mean i think that's probably why so many people watch bloody youtube cat videos and stuff <laughs> there's loads of content out there but actually when you see a little fluffy kitten or cat you drop into your heart yeah, right? yeah, and yeah, you yeah. Some of those, i think we're in information overwhelm yeah. in this in this century so actually any opportunity where we get to feel yeah. rather than think it makes us stop and we actually appreciate and that. we have a moment you know sort of an, uh, interestingly enough um, it's so so it's it the fact that you're saying that just as two messages came in from two people hi me great to see you they're actually literally saying exactly that oh my gosh you get us <laughs> like you know and it's that because actually we get that this can be a really hard thing to do yeah. we get that you know sort of like we're not actually sitting here saying it can be easy to extract your own stories you may actually need to sit down and spend a little bit of time and go what is it that i care about enough to put my time energy resources skills and money potentially into sharing out in the world because that's what i want people to actually feel that i dedicated part of me to supporting them so that there's an energy match between us, between you and your audience out there. And that actually, you know, that's that's really about what's your flavor? How are you showing up out there? And and really, that's the invitation, isn't it? We, we do talk about flavors quite a lot. So <laughs> just, we'll end on this, don't worry. We'll yeah, let you we go will. in a minute. So there are lots we'll of people try. out there that when I see them, they're not memorable. And yeah. I, we call those people vanilla, vanilla, right? So they sit on the fence, they don't really stand for anything, they've got good content, maybe their delivery style is actually quite good, yeah. but I probably wouldn't remember them 24 hours later, yeah. somebody spoke about something. Most of the people that we are drawn to work with yeah. um, are pretty Marmite. Yeah. <laughs> so they are, they stand for something, and you're either gonna love what they stand for, or you're gonna hate what they stand for, yeah. but at least you remember them, right? right? And at least they invoke some form of reaction, emotion, yeah opinion about what they're talking about even if it's like they kind of want to beat you up they want to go rawr that's not how it is rawr and 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 actually that's the piece if you've gotten the reaction 
the chances are I've definitely had people come back to me and go, do you know what, I really don't agree with what you're saying. And you know what, that opens up the conversation, doesn't it? But we're not, we're not here to all be right and be yeah. gurus and say it's my way or the highway, yeah. but you want to invoke some sort of discussion, debate, because then you know that you're touching on things that people care about yeah. and then you're just adding your opinions and your experiences to the pot. Just like we said at the Facebook like, beginning of this Facebook Live, there's no real new information out there. No. It's just your interpretation, your experience, and the packaging that you want to then share your message with the other people. Yeah. So we want you to make sure that you rate yourselves and uh, do some work on the bits that you feel that you need to improve on or have some more evidence for in these areas to make yourself more memorable. Even to the point of, you know, if we were to ask you right now to put the comments, whether you're watching this as a replay or whether you're watching this live, to actually put the three or four core messages that you actually stand for, that you would be speaking about, that you are known for. If you can't do that, go ask. You know, when you think of me and what I stand for, what I actually speak about, what would those things be? Because if people can't answer it, then you're not sharing it, you're not showing up as you enough. You're not sharing those messages enough. And that becomes a call to action for you. If you are known for those things, then brilliant. How do you take them further out there? So please, please, please share your core concepts. Um, it might be the first time you've really thought about it like this. So you might need to do a little bit of homework and home play. So put them in a little bit later. Don't forego this exercise. It can be magic. And as I said before, I will share a couple of example frameworks for you, some of the things that we, we do on the retreat, so you can see some pe people's out there, not all famous people, some average coaches that are using it as their methodology, just to spark some ideas of how you could position this. Yeah. And if you've got your own framework built, then please, if you've got an information, a, 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 an infographic or a diagram for it, <laughs> please do share it, either in the comments or in the Connection Hub. I'd love, I'd really love to see people's, it's, it's one of my... Yeah. little things as framework so really I, is. I love to see what's going on out there no it's brilliant and daisy i'm completely in agreement it broke it broke she's she, she, her little comment is no woman should be at war with her wardrobe and i'm so in agreement i'm actually at the point where i'm like i really want to take the thing Have off you been fiddling? yeah i've been fiddling <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sorry if it's been distracting but that just goes to, that probably is brett's just actually made a comment earlier that's probably a marmite moment as well it's probably like oh daisy's probably going to take a little bit of time to warm back up to me now <laughs> You know, and it's that, it's how do you take, so, so back to my, my earlier thing is, notice the story, so one more call to action for you if you like, that's, that's a gentle one that I would invite you to do forever and ever. What are the stories, the events, the happenings that actually show up on a day-to-day -day basis, moment to moment, you know, actually the chances are that I'm never going to be at war with my wardrobe again because it impacted on a Facebook Live, I'm like... Damn already, she's right, she's right. So I've had my own Marmite moment. Um, she is the wardrobe queen though, isn't she? So she's gonna pick up on those but, things. But isn't that just amazing? So, and, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. How do you use who you are, what you do, to actually make a contribution from the filter that you're coming at it from? And that's exactly what we're talking about. The, the stick of rock that runs through you, the alignment of you to your core messages, is the piece that we really want you to be out there sharing. And that, one of the best ways to share it is to develop it into a framework and to notice the stories that you can actually use as the coat hooks to get people's attention. That was the summary of this Facebook Live. <laughs> we'll see you next Tuesday at one o'clock, guys. Blessing. And we'll join the Connection Hub if you're not already in it. I've put it as the pin post. Brilliant. Good to see you all. See you. Oh, this is my turn. <laughs> Hi.